Hello and welcome to Hastings Community TV channel number 15. My name is Terry Swanson and I am here today with the superintendent of the Hastings School System, Mr. Tim Collins. Welcome, Tim. Thank you, Terry. And uh, you're back with your radio voice and your radio face. I'm not sure either one of those fit, but we'll go with that for uh, right now. So uh, as most of you have maybe heard is that we got a bond uh, referendum coming up and an operating levy coming up this fall for vote. And first thing I think we want to do, Tim, is distinguish between the two, even though today we will be spending the majority of our time talking about the bond issue. That's right. When, uh, when people hear bond or they hear levy, really it's a tax. Both of them are taxes on the local, local homeowner, the local farmer, and the local business owner. So it's, it's definitely a tax. A bond is a tax. A levy is a tax. But in other years, we've tried to uh, stick with that a bond is for building, that bonds go for roofs, parking lots, windows, carpeting, uh, almost anything hard surface that you can touch. And a levy is for the day-to-day -day operation of learning, which really ties back to people. It ties back to teachers, principals, PSAs, secretaries. So the levies are the dollars that we pay mostly for salaries along with uh, insurance, heat, et cetera. So, so the bond is for building, the levy is for learning. And it's a little bit unique that uh, we're having both on the same question. Okay. In other years, we've had a vote just for a bond, or we've had a vote to renew a levy. Right. Uh, this year, we decided that we, we need them both, so let's not wait another year for the levy. As long as we're talking about it, and as long as there's the cost for the vote, and the fact that we need both of them now, and I, and I think that the viewers are going to see why we need them both, and as you said, we're going to focus in more on the, the bond, but uh, we definitely need both of them in the year 2017. Now to tie that back to uh, the everyday household, uh, the simplest way to look at this is if you need to re-roof your house, that would be a bond. The electrical bill that you pay for your electricity every single month within your household, that is your operating levy type money. So that, uh, that is really a simple scenario as to how you can look at this but obviously the school district is on a much bigger scale, so. Absolutely, uh, you know, roofing a, the high school is a $5 million project. So when you're thinking of the numbers of the roof on your home, which is a big number for you personally, yep. uh, it's not just one roof that's on the high school. There's many sections of roof on the high school due to the facility size. So we are talking about some pretty big, big dollars. And, you know, one of the things that helped us was we started planning on this for over a year ago. And for the first time in my 24 years of being a superintendent, we had 19 to 20 people that came up to me and said, I'd love to be on your facility task force. And this was a committee that met every other week for two to three hours. And they walked every inch of the middle school. They walked the high school. They walked Todd Field. They walked our facilities. They met with us and they listened to all the needs that we presented. So it was really good to see the involvement from our community on such a task force. What was really neat about this was the wide range of people who said, yeah, I want to give back and this is going to be a five month commitment mm -hmm. and I'm going to commit for every Tuesday night for three hours and some discussion and then I'm going to put my name to it and I'm going to own it. So it was, it was really good to see that involvement. And they came to the board in May and they unanimously, I was a little worried about that <laughs> because you get 19 people together, when is it ever unanimous? And they unanimously said, we need to reinvest in our facilities right now. And even though they had a list of over $70 million worth of projects for our school district, they narrowed it down to about 51, 52 million that they felt we needed to reinvest in. And they presented that at the school board and the school board looked at that list and said, you know, we appreciate the work, we appreciate everything that you've done, but we want it to be at about 49.5 million because we know that at that amount, it will not raise the taxes whatsoever. And I think one of the things that the committee saw was that I don't even call it the new high school anymore. But you hear it a lot in the community. That's, that's the piece that uh, is really interesting. I, I refrain from now calling it 
the new high school anymore because then it leaves the perception that this is the new high school, a high school that began construction back in 1999-2000 and a roof reaches its life expectancy or the, the, the level of roof that was put on or the quality of roof back in 1999-2000 has about a 15 year life warranty. A tennis court has about a 15 year life warranty. The high school track has about a 15 to 20 year life warranty. So now that we're in the year 2017, uh, it's starting to run its course and the committee saw that. When they walked the high school, you know, they saw some of the issues and when they walked the middle school, they saw some of those, those issues. And really then that came to their top three of what they are recommending that we absolutely need to reinvest in. And that is the middle school HVAC system. And HVAC is heating, ventilation, um, air conditioning, the high school roof and other roofs and parking lots in the district. They saw the condition of all those and said, those can't wait till the year 2019. They can't wait till the year 2020. And really that became the core of their recommendation. And when you look at just those three, and we will have this list yep. up on our website, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the high school roof with insulation is roughly 5.2 million. The middle school HVAC, which is redoing all the ventilation units up on the roof, redoing, uh, converting it, converting the heat system over, that's a 28 to $30 million project, as you can imagine, because as, as you mentioned before we went on the air, um, that I don't want to date you, but you moved into the middle school when it was the, the new school. When I was in, uh, uh, let's, let's see, eighth grade. So you can imagine how much work then needs to be done. And with the parking lots, the, the high school parking lot alone is around 1.4 million. McAuliffe parking lot is around 500 to 600,000. Those three items alone total up to $38 million of the $49.5 million. And one of the things that we've discussed previously, uh, um, especially when it comes to roofs, is, and, and we got pictures coming up uh, a little further on that show you some of the uh, problems that we have with uh, the roof not being the way that it should be. And the fact that patching a roof is just delaying the expense. Okay, and we've, we've talked about that before. You can throw a patch on there, but the rest of the roof is going bad, and sooner or later you're gonna to have to replace the whole roof, and between the patch and the uh, increase in the cost of doing the roof, it doesn't make sense to do it that way. If you're gonna do it, do it right, get it done at once, and today's cost is certainly gonna be cheaper than tomorrow, so. And, and again, everybody on the committee understood that, and that's why when they came to the board and presented, they said, we need to go for the bond this November. We can't wait two years or three years and hope that things keep uh, going okay because they saw the rough leakage, they saw some of the damage. And so there, there are other things then that are on the list as well and that is uh, on the screen up in front of you. You know, McCullough parking lot technology. A lot of school districts and communities have a technology levy. So a lot of school districts I've will- I've seen that. They'll have a bond <laughs> for their buildings They'll pass a levy to run their schools, and then they'll pass a technology levy. I think that, for example, South St. Paul is about four to 500 students smaller than, than Hastings. They have a 10-year technology levy that brings in $500,000 every year. So part of the plan here is to go for 1.2 million in technology, spend about $400,000 each year over the next three years, spend some of our set aside for technology, and then quite honestly, five years from now, we too are probably going to have to introduce a technology levy to our community as well, probably around the year 2023. Other things in the list are additional cameras for people who know the size of our middle school, they know the size of our high school. Security cameras don't necessarily prevent a violent intruder or a violent act from occurring, but it definitely allows us and law enforcement to find out for sure where unruly activity is taking place, yep. to see if there's a pattern uh, of behavior from certain adults or students that we could maybe prevent that behavior. Uh, and definitely that adds to 
um, as to the security. Uh, alert system, when people see alert system, what that means in the year 2017 is you and I are used to having a fire alarm in a middle school or a high school where we can yep. go break the glass. An alert system would be uh, for people who have walked in our, our middle school, the auditorium, they know that our middle school auditorium is on the far end away from the classrooms. Let's say you or I were walking down by the middle school auditorium during the school day and we saw somebody walk in with a gun in their hand. Mm -hmm. We could immediately go push this alarm and this alert system would spread into every classroom. Not only would it be um, lights flashing, not only would it be a sound, but it would be a message to everyone in the building that there's a violent intruder in the building. And so that's what we mean by... And that, that then... Uh is what causes the immediate lockdown then too, correct? That causes the immediate lockdown. We can interface it with our local law enforcement. They would know okay. that there's a violent intruder. And again, anybody who's been at our high school or middle school, much different security level there because of the size of the facility. You go into Tilden Community Center, if there's a violent intruder, if you or I yell, pretty yep. much everybody in the building you know, will hear it. Will hear it. So that's what alert system and that's what some of the security improvements are. Then, then other issues that the committee came up with is that our middle school gymnasium, that floor, if it was put in in 1969, yep. it served its time. So to redo the middle school floor, the bleachers, the, the backboards, the scoreboards, et cetera. And we got some pictures of that, I believe, too, coming up uh, yes. of the middle school gymnasium. Uh, flexible learning spaces for people um, of my generation or your generation, or anybody in their 40s, they probably don't even know what flexible learning space means. We have some of it at our high school, so in between our classrooms, there's pods where students can come out and meet. They can talk, they can discuss, they can collaborate while the teacher is still in the classroom working with the other 20 to 25 students. Our commons area at the high school, for anybody who's been at the, the high school, it's an area where we can serve lunch. It's an area where we can have breakout meetings. It's, a, it's an area where students after school can study for exams. So flexible learning space can mean that. Areas where students can, can gather and learn, but it also means flexible learning furniture. So for example, in an elementary school, and some of our business world now knows this, some people don't sit at a computer anymore. Right. They stand at a laptop. Yep. Some people in the business world, they're on an exercise bike exercising while they're working on their computer. Some of that is very applicable to our elementary and our middle school specifically as well. And we do have some of this flexible furniture in our classrooms right now. For a student who's maybe wired and has more energy, they can be pedaling a bike and burning off some of that energy while they're reading because we all don't learn the same right. way. So the committee felt that not only do we wanna add things for security, not only do we want to reinvest in our facilities, but we also want to look at what can we do to increase the academic uh, achievement in our schools as well. And the flexible learning space has definitely stood out for them. You know, one of the other things, Tim, and I know we use this a lot in our community, is the common area space of the high school gets used for many, many, many things. I mean, uh, it's, it's constantly being used. On the, the flexible learning space, is that also space then that gets used for the community ed program and things of that nature, or how does that fit into it like the uh, common area space is used for a lot of community activities? Uh, I, I don't necessarily believe that it would increase the avail more availability, but if community ed and or an organization from the community was using our middle school or high school or elementaries, when they're using one of those rooms, that flexible space would be available to them as okay. well. Got it. And then the last item on there is uh, Todd Field improvements and reinvesting in, in Todd Field. Uh, I know that the committee, we spent a lot of time discussing this. We're unique at Hastings. Most, well, we're unique that Todd Field's unique. It is very unique. I mean, and, and that's a positive. But what I say by unique is most high schools, not only in the state of Minnesota, but most high schools in America, their football stadium is next to their high school. Yep. So then you can sometimes use that facility for more than just the football game or the soccer game or the lacrosse game. You can use it for practice. You can use it for other events because it's right next to your uh, high school facility. So we did spend a lot of time 
uh, on where, where do we reinvest, should we reinvest? And again, the, com the committee unanimously said, uh, Todd Field is just like our high school. It's just like our middle school. We as a community have invested in Todd Field. We've had partners with businesses and individuals who have invested in yep. Todd Field. And we want that continued commitment for our children and our grandchildren to reinvest in Todd Field. And so Todd Field was looked at not only as an athletic complex, and I know that some people have concerns over um, investing in or reinvesting in athletics, but it was seen as what you had mentioned early as a community space. This, yep. this is part of our Hastings community. This is part of our history. And we want to protect that. We're proud of it. And we want it to get more use than ever before. We want to use Todd Field more than ever before. And the reinvesting in it and the placement of synthetic turf there will help get it to be used a lot more than it's currently being used. And it's certainly uh, Todd Field, uh, which anybody in this community that's even driven down uh, Vermilion Street, is that location-wise, it is the place where most people will see it. I mean, we got the junctions of 55 and 61 sitting right next to the facility itself. So anybody that's coming in through town, either direction, going through town, whatever, uh, that is certainly uh, a, a nice addition to our community. And you know, the list of, of nine that I have up here, I wanna make sure that it, people understand it's just not that list. And the extensive list is on our, up on our website. And you know, it's 60 to $70,000 for reinvestment in musical instruments, uh, reinvestment in our performing arts uh, uh, seating both at our high school and at our, at our middle schools, carpeting district-wide at our, specifically at our high school. So there's a lot more to this list, but I wanted to, for purpose of our discussion, yep. to condense it to, to these nine. As we talked earlier, you know, up on the screen right now, and as people are viewing this, uh, definitely you can see where at our middle school, there's a steel chair there because it would not be safe for you or I to sit on that chair. And, and so, that's in the gymnasium at the uh, middle school, correct? It's, it's at the performing arts. Performing arts, arts. okay. And so definitely uh, we have some of that at our high school too. Uh, right now today, if you walked into our high school performing art theater, if you sat in some of the, the, the chairs in the front row, you would go down near the ground because they've, you know, they, they get heavy use. I don't know why it is, but people tend to sit more in the front row than they do in the back row. So the, the heavier use does tend to, <laughs> to wear out. And, you know, in the photo uh, on your screen right above the, the chair at the Middle School Performing Arts, that is a dressing room at our high school, right off our performing arts, and you can see the damage from the, the leaking roof. Yep. The, the ceiling in that dressing room, you can see what's happening. And so we definitely you know when the committee saw that photo, that photo when they walked through there, I should say when they walked through there physically, they said, wow, uh, the roof it's a problem. It's just not a, a little leak. And then, of course, the rest of the pictures just show some of the age of the, the boiler system at our, our middle school, some of the, the parking lots that need to be redone. Uh, and again, you know, it's just it's time now for, for, for us to reinvest in our, in our schools and our facilities. You know, this is the one that... Uh, <laughs> I this, know. this is what prompted me to call you. Yes. Uh, is, uh, I was a, reading. you always want to talk about taxes. <laughs> of course. And uh, one of the things that uh, I was reading the, the uh, e-news that you send out. Yep. And you were going through this bond issue, and the bond issue has a zero tax effect on myself and everybody else as a resident. And that immediately uh, got the, uh, the, the telephone going saying, okay, uh, Tell Tim, me how. Tim, how are you doing this? I mean, that's, you and I have done this a long time. How do you get by with trying to uh, get a $49.5 million bond issue and then telling the people that it's not going to increase their taxes? And I'm going to let you run with that one because you've explained it to me, but you'll certainly be able to explain a lot better than I will. Yeah, I know that uh, some people are going to say, okay, that's too good to be true. And, and really sometimes in the school finance world, it's the timing of everything. And the new high school, which I said I was no longer going to call <laughs> the new high school, that is going to be fully paid off in the year 2021. 
So right now, our business community, our ag community, and the residents of Hastings are paying uh, a nice... Still paying for the school. They're still paying for the school, so there's a good chunk of tax money that's going to pay for the high school. Well, we can... Law allows us to do $49.5 million of reinvestment, take that loan out, so to speak, right now. Mm -hmm. And we can take it out in the year... Well, it would be 2018 by the time right. the bond would get approved. And we can pay interest only on that loan bond until the high school is fully paid off. Then in 2021, your taxes on your home that are going right now for the high school will shift to the pay for the $49.5 million bond. Got it. And sometimes we try to do the comparison of home versus school. It's kind of right. like a loan. Yep. It'd be like... Uh, on my home, I have three years left and I have the house almost paid for. And then my wife, Tammy, says, well, let's put on an addition. Yeah. And I say, okay, well, what's this going to talk cost us? Well, we can do the addition now, pay the interest only for three years, and then the money that was going towards our loan for our house... We we'll use that to pay it off. Pay it off. And that's kind of how, yeah. how this is going to, to work. I'm, uh, the reason that I had to call you right away on this one is this, this is really unique. I mean, this is, uh, it's almost like pennies from heaven uh, for the things that we need to get done and to be able to do the things that need to be done without uh, affecting the, the taxes uh, for each of the property tax uh, payers, that's... It doesn't get now. It is true, and we're going to talk about this later. But yep. I'm just going to say it right now. It is true that if in November the community voted no on the bond and said we don't want to reinvest in our facilities, not in 2018, but in the year 2021, your school district taxes then would go down. Correct. Because in 2021, the high school would be paid for, and then you wouldn't have to make payments towards that anymore. So a portion of your school district taxes would go down, and we'll talk about that uh, a little bit later. And, I, and we've talked about this before, that in order to run a school district, you need taxes. Yep. In order to run the city, you need taxes. In order to run the county, you need taxes. But if everybody looks at their tax statement closely, everybody goes right to the bottom right-hand corner. Exactly. What's, what do I owe? Yep, we've been there before. But if they go across and see, what is the city? What is the school? What's the county? What is the county? Because people, whenever I'm out speaking, will say, you're always asking me for money. You're always asking me for money. And it, it is true that the Hastings community was asked for a bond in 1999 for the high school. It is true that in 2009, we did a $19.25 million bond at zero interest. Mm -hmm. It is true that in 2005, we did the last of our levies, and we've asked to renew those levies, not for more money, right. but to renew them. That's a whole nother show. We have not yep. asked for an increase in the operating levy since 2005. Five. Correct. These are two, what's up on your screen right now are two actual tax statements. I pulled these off of two of employees who work for us. They actually gave me permission to, to give their names, but I've chosen not to. But I could go to Dakota County and get this information. The person who lives in a $200,000 home over a 10 year period, their school district taxes have gone up about 20 nine, bucks. 20 bucks. Yep. And I think right now that if you could get a guarantee that your taxes on your home for school would only go up 20 bucks for the next 10 years, would you take that? Absolutely. The other piece of this too that uh, we, we discussed a little bit before we even came on today is the, the numbers that you're seeing here include both bond issue and operating levies. This is not just for the bond issue and what has happened over the last 10 years just in bond issues or this is what happened over the last 10 years just in operating levels. This is a complete school district funding line on your taxes for everything that uh, is being taken. And if somebody would go to their property tax statement right now if they own a $270,000 house, their property tax statement is probably going to be about $2,700. Mm -hmm. But that's all three combined. Right. This is showing just the school district. So when people tell me, Tim, you're asking for money all the time and you're taxing me out of my home, this is the reality. 
and you can call Dakota County and get your reality. I think the other thing that I hear is, you know, when are you going to quit asking me to reinvest in facilities? And the answer is never. Exactly. It, it's we're going to constantly reinvest, and it, it happens not only in in Hastings. Uh, it definitely happens in school districts yep. all around us. These were bonds that were passed a year ago, so these were successes. So a year ago, these communities all said, "We need to re reinvest," and they approved them. This next slide shows that this fall these communities are going to have a bond vote. And when you know that Winona is smaller than Hastings as a school, when you know that Fairbolt is about our same size, West St. Paul is a hair bigger, Richfield is just a hair bigger, you might say, why are you only asking for $49.5 million? Would you ask that? I already did, <laughs> didn't I? <laughs> and part of it's the timing of everything. Those communities might be adding an elementary school they might i know that northfield for example they're looking to knock down their high school and uh, build a new high school so again it shows that all communities go through this cycle uh, i know that we only have a few minutes left in our program one of the things that I, I wanted to share for sure is this is exactly what the ballot question will look like there will be two questions one is asking question number one will you vote to approve a 49.52 million dollar bond and then this is the part, we've talked about this before, we have to on that one say that by voting yes, it's going to increase your taxes. I've argued with our legislators that it should say, by voting yes, you are agreeing to keep your taxes at the same rate. Their argument is that if this bond vote would fail, your taxes would go down. So if it passes, that means your taxes are going up. And yep. My argument is my taxes aren't going up. My taxes will still stay the same. But we've talked about this a lot. Yep. They've changed it on the operating levy. If you do an operating levy question and you're just renewing a levy, you don't have to say by voting yes, it's going to increase yep. your taxes. So, and we've done that, what, three, four times now? Right. So, again, I, I don't want people getting in the booth saying, hey, we watched Terry Swanson and Tim Collins, and they said this wasn't going to increase our taxes. The reality is we have to say that by law because I know vote the taxes would go down. Uh, I think the other thing, did you have anything you wanted to say on that before we... No, it's just, you know, uh, you and I have discussed that a lot. And, and the reality is for most people, I guess uh, I'll speak for myself, is that uh, whether your taxes go up or your taxes go down is what really ends up in your back pocket at the end of the day. And by voting... Voting yes for this bond issue, your back pocket's not getting any lighter. That's just that simple. Is that go? It, it's not going up. It's not going down. Uh, we're we're using what I look at as kind of a loophole to uh, get all these things done that need to be done without affecting my back pocket. And I look at it as doesn't get much better than that. I don't even look at it as loophole, because that <laughs> means like I found a way. I look at it as great timing. That works. Uh, I, I can go with that. We did a survey, and great news for us is that the community said 78% would support a bond if it's a zero tax impact. 58% said that they would support a levy of about $300 per student, so we're very happy about that. Uh, just want to let you know if you, if you have more questions, contact us. I do know that the screen right now doesn't show the, the dates but we or, or the places, but we are going to have a public informational meeting on the 20th at the middle school. We're having one on the uh, 25th at the middle school, and we've also recently added a meeting in Hampton and in Vermilion. And, and we definitely know that the number one way to approve, uh, get a bond approved and a levy approved is to help spread the word. Very good. We thank you very much for your time. We thank you for watching. Absolutely, if you get time, go to one of the meetings. If you have any questions, uh, it, the information is on the website. You can always contact somebody at the school. Uh, thanks again for watching, and thank you, Tim, for coming in today. Thank you.